All right, for the next film here, I'm talking about Real Genius. This is an 80s uh, teenish type, uh, light John Hughes-esque comedy that I had not seen. And yes, I know this was a prevalent genre we had back in the day where not everything had to do with superheroes. So, I hadn't seen Real Genius. I guess this is what put Val Kilmer on the map. This is from 1985. So, the next year, it's like, oh, hey, look, he was in Real Genius. Why don't we put him up with Tom Cruise? Put him up in the, in the F-16. Or, sorry, F-14. You know, it could be like, hey, this is what got him in a Top Gun. Well, there's this kid. I guess he's 15. He's so smart. He's going to the uh, smart guy school, right? And he has to roommate with the guy who was the smart guy at the school, the top guy. But he's on his way out. He's a senior. And that's Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer's all over all the marketing stuff. I wouldn't say he's the main character. He's the most interesting. He's eccentric. He's an oddball. He knows he can get away with things. He has this uh, uh, sardonic attitude towards things. He, he's witty. He'll, you know, throw somebody under the bus in, in a manner that, but they deserve it. So I guess not really under the bus, but anyways, William Atherton plays the professor that they're working with, and he's got this side contract going with the military to develop a laser that can, like, blast somebody from space, okay? Convoluted means to go about assassination, all right? But I want to say that William Atherton is the ultimate 80s douche, okay? He's not necessarily a villain. He's not a villain in Ghostbusters, but he's the douche who causes problems. He's not the villain. He's not Hans Gruber in Die Hard, but he he gets in the way, right? Well, he's not really a villain here, and yet he is the antagonist, without necessarily being evil. I don't think this movie had support of the military because, it. oh, hey, look, the military's going to take a B-1 up in the air and hit people with lasers, and yeah, it, it's not a good look for the military, really. But there is some decent music in the movie. I think I heard some Don Henley track or two. you got to remember that in the 80s, lasers were awesome. Now it's like... We have stuff better than lasers. That seems to be the way it goes. I mean, we had laser printers. I don't even see much of those anymore. Nobody talks up lasers. We're not studying lasers. We're not doing anything with that. You have a laser light show. It doesn't impress anybody. So they build like a super strong laser, right? Okay, big deal. I, you know, for much of the first half of this movie, I wasn't hearing the super smart guy jargon. It didn't seem to be geared towards the audience of course it wouldn't be because the whole point of being smart is being above average and you need to appeal to the masses in order to make money with your film right i mean this is a hollywood film and i'm sitting here talking about drinking mountain dew out of a bud weiser uh, beer koozie and snacking on some reese's pieces that's high art for you well it was the latter half where they started to actually implement some of the smart stuff. There was a gag in particular where the, uh, let's call him featured douche, okay? Because William Atherton, he's, he's douche lord, all right? So featured douche is this guy who keeps trying to derail their project because he was promised to be the lead, and, and now you bring the 15-year-old in, oh, it's on now. We're making fun of you. I mean, he did, he did some... Uh, He's dropping on him. He broadcast a phone call he had with his mom where he's like emotionally breaking. I want to go home. What? You rented out my room? Uh, and you embarrassed him. Well, they got good on him. They knocked him out with some, I guess, nitrous oxide. They put it under the door of his his room. Breaking and entry. I, I maybe left the door unlocked. And then used his braces as a transmitter so that they could... Uh, I guess, well, the speaker, I guess, would be in his mouth, but he got it to, to think that he was talking to him. So, 
they took off with the laser and they didn't know where the laser was. Like, it's like, hey, hey, William Atherton, we made this laser for you. Isn't that something? And it's like, boom, it's gone. Oh, hey, well, what's the deal here? Oh, I know. They made a weapon out of it. You know, you have a laser that's cutting through bronze statues and trees and shit for miles. And you're like, hmm, what are the practical applications of this? Oh, I don't know. I thought you were supposed to be geniuses. You know, but a lot of times geniuses are in that tunnel. They got the tunnel vision. They got the blinders on. They don't see the bigger picture because they're so focused on the end goal of let's get the laser going. And So I guess that's something that could have been explored a little more. So they need to find out where the laser is. Well, they talk to this guy and it's like, this is Jesus. You know, it's like, really? Uh, you, you made it. You did a bad thing. You made a weapon. Now you you have to you have to help uh, you have to tell us where it's going or something. It's like that doesn't it didn't really make a lot of sense. Like what where is it? You know um, if, if if this Jesus has the the omniscient power and and all he it doesn't really add up here. Uh, why would he need to be told where it is? But but then it's like and and quit touching yourself and he's like okay and it's like if you touch yourself yes I mean no and. and they mess with him some more. It's like, okay, so I need you to arrive at William Atherton's house, but don't go inside. You'll see a sign. So what they done was they put a lot of popcorn, like a big foil popcorn tin, like in the middle of William Atherton's house. By the way, oddly enough, Deborah Foreman shows up halfway in the movie, has a little talk with uh, Val Kilmer, at, over at Deborah Foreman's house, or shit, William Atherton's house. She's the daughter of one of the guys at the military, and uh, and Val Kilmer and her are like, I don't know, kind of, kind of trading witty barbs, okay? Well, Val Kilmer would show back up at, at that place, and she's over there wearing William Atherton's shirt upstairs. Yep. Deborah Foreman hooking up William Atherton. It's like... I think there's some age discrepancy. It's kind of creepy, but never to be heard of again. I think it would have been interesting if she was actually in the house at the end and had, and got like pushed out the window from all the popcorn because they reconfigured the laser guidance system. They switched out the chip, and it ended up hitting William Atherton's house, uh, the target that they had out in the desert, which I don't know if they, the flyover range, if, it, if they were actually high enough to make this kind of shot but the laser cuts through the house hits all the popcorn and and the and and the featured douche he goes inside but he sees this light come through and he's like oh yes god is talking to me i see a sign and then boom the popcorn is going up so it's like oh what are you supposed to do are you supposed to make popcorn for a living is that what your sign is this is a large comical amount of popcorn thrusting through the house Breaking windows, spilling over, you know, disrupting the floors, come busting through the seams, okay? I didn't mean it to sound like that, but that does sound kind of cool. So, this is really interesting to me because it's not the type of thing we would see today. Yes, we have the technology to make popcorn blow up a house, but do we? No, it would be CGI. And it would look like shite. So for this one scene, I mean, I'd have to give an extra star to the movie, really. I mean, it it seems kind of bland and, and basic, bare bones. Val Kilmer's trying really hard. And this is that kind of role where it's like so obvious that they're trying to push Val Kilmer that he's perhaps too obnoxious, really. Um... He, d- he does get a, a little reality check here and there, but it's not uh, too much. And it, it's the it's a, such a forced deal. It, it, also, Uncle Rico has hair in this, see, but he's like balding and stuff. Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite, you know, the guy who talks about 1982. Well, I guess he was the top student in the 70s and for some reason lives in a secret location in the closet of Val Kilmer's room and he shows up every once in a while to give some kind of advice or whatever but he had entered some prizes and 
wins won some sweepstakes stuff and hooks up with a girl who's obsessed with only banging the smartest people in America. It's rather off-putting. Yeah, so Willie Matherton's house is wrecked, and I guess uh, Deborah Foreman's not there, which I, I would have liked some more closure on that angle. Or even if it would have been interesting to bring her up as a love interest for Val Kilmer. Hell, the little kid, he gets a love interest. Also, his his chick also from Valley Girl. I think she was a friend of Deborah Foreman's character. Uh, but I, her character's name is Jordan, one of the few characters' names I remember in this film. And I thought she was adorable. Uh, she was very talkative and uh, socially awkward, but... Uh, you know, this adorable engineer chick with overalls on, and uh, yeah, I guess she hooked up with the 15-year-old. Is that out of bounds in today's enlightened 2018 society? Do we need a college chick hooking up with a 15-year-old boy? Well, they are both in college, and it, and it is the girl making the moves, you know, that kind of thing. We cap our movie off with everybody wants to rule the world. Doon, doon. You know, little tears for fears ain't a bad way to go out. Overall, enjoyable enough film. I wouldn't call it a classic. Maybe that's part of why I've uh, it's been out of my life for so long. But if you're into things like Weird Science, The Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink, and kind of a stretch there. Um. You know, some other miscellaneous stuff, right? Maybe check it out. Watch it on Netflix. Real genius. Two and a half out of four stars.